This episode we're going to tear into an S3X Sturmy Archer fixed gear 3 speed and take a look at how it works. Now for those that are not familiar with the concept of fixed gear, what it means simply is that the, um, the hub does not coast. In other words, the gearing is fixed. If the wheel is turning, the cranks are turning. Sturmy Archer has designed the S3X to be fixed in three ratios. So it's a three-speed hub, fixed gear. The three ratios on this hub start in high gear with direct and the two lower gears as reduction gears. Okay, so we're going to pull the guts out of this thing and show you what makes it work. Okay, we've got the uh, lock nuts and the cone removed from the non-drive side. Now we need to unscrew the internals from the shell by driving this ring counterclockwise. should go quite easily because uh, this hub does not transmit any torque to the ball ring so uh, it doesn't tighten the ball ring into the shell like a three-speed uh, freewheel or a five-speed hub would. And there it comes. Now the first difference you'll notice uh, when you remove the internals from the shell is that there is no ratchets inside the shell and there is no pawls. There's actually uh, three uh, notches and three matching uh, raised nubs on here that uh, mesh with that so that uh, this unit is in direct contact with the hub shell and does not freewheel. Now we take the lock nuts and the cone off the drive side. This does the spring. Make sure you don't you lose the little washer there that uh, goes on the top of it. And lift out the driver. The ball ring. And the ring gear. comes the clutch. There really isn't a lot of small parts that you have to worry about losing. And uh, then the planet cage uh, comes off. Uh, we'd have to turn it around. And we have to take the uh, circlip off with the circlip pliers. And we have to kind of wiggle the axle out so that the uh, key slides out of the sun gears. Now this uh, this is a newer design uh, that has the sun gears as part of the sub-assembly uh, integrated with the planetaries. So we don't have to worry about uh, timing the planetaries or anything when we put it back together. That's it really, the sum total of the internal parts. Not really a lot to it. So we'll look at the construction of this unit. Here we have the axle and uh, we've left the clutch on it to demonstrate how it's actuated by the shifter. The driver which meshes with the ring gear and the clutch meshes with the inside of the driver. So the, um, the driver is always driving both the ring gear and the clutch with this particular unit. The planet carrier is a complete sub-assembly which has the sun gears and the planetary gears integrated into it. The larger sun gear on this side to mesh with the smaller planetary gears and a smaller sun gear at this end to mesh with the larger planetary gears. When it's assembled the small planetaries mesh with the ring gear 
Now the way the power flow works in first gear, we'll shift to first gear just to show you what happens inside. The clutch is retracted so that it is not driving the planetary gear. The clutch is uh, driving only the ring gear. So the ring gear transmits power to the planetaries and the sun gear, the largest sun gear, is held stationary by this sliding key. When the input is the ring gear and the output is the planet carrier and the sun gear is held stationary, the result is underdrive. So the planet carrier rotates at a reduced speed from the ring gear. When we move the shift selector to second gear, the clutch advances, but it still does not mesh with the planet carrier. But the key has moved along so that it now meshes with the second sun gear. The input is still driving the ring gear. Now the planet carrier will rotate at a ratio of 75% of the input. So we have one rotation input to 0.75 rotations output. Okay, now we shift to third gear. Now the uh, clutch has fully advanced. It will now mesh with the splines on the face of the planet carrier. And the sliding key has advanced so that neither of the planet uh, or the sun gears are engaged. So both sun gears are free to rotate and the driver turns or the driver drives the planet carrier and it's also still driving the ring gear so everything is is in lockup. The ring gear and the planet carrier carrier and the sun gears and everything are driven at a one-to-one -one ratio. The splines on the face of the planet carrier drive the matching notches in the hub shell, so we have a direct one-to-one -one ratio or third gear. Okay, now we'll demonstrate this with the planet carrier in place. So we shift to first gear. We fully retract the, uh, the clutch and the driver turns the ring gear, which turns the planet carrier. We have the large sun gear, the first one engaged to the axle. The other one is free to rotate. So that gives us our low gear. Second gear, all right, we've engaged the second sun gear. All right, the large sun gear is now free to rotate. The clutch still has not advanced on the uh, planet carrier. Okay, it's still, planet carrier is still rotating independently of the clutch. Third gear, now the clutch meshes with the planet carrier, so we have a direct one-to-one -one ratio. So now with the internal unit assembled, and the shifter in first gear. So now the driver is driving the ring gear. The clutch is disengaged from the planet carrier. The ring gear is driving the planetary. The large sun gear is coupled to the axle. And if you look in through there, you, you won't be able to see it on the film, but uh, I can see that the large sun gear is stationary. The other one is rotating. So in first gear we have one rotation input, 0.625 rotations output for first gear. Second gear, now we've released the large sun gear from the axle. We've coupled the, the um, uh, small sun gear to the axle. So now the planetary uh, cage rotates at 0.75 
rotations per rotation of input. Third gear. Now the clutch is coupled to the planetary. You'll see that the uh, planetary gears do not rotate. All right, because the uh, the um, engagement key has moved past the sun gears, so both sun gears are free to rotate. The whole unit is coupled together, and we end up with one rotation input, one rotation output, direct drive, third gear. And that's it. That's how this thing works. Quite simple, really. So until next time, thanks for watching.